the movie Anikolapo by Kunle Apolayo. First of all, let me just um, highlight the fact that Nollywood has come a long way and for the um, stretch of imagination that you have streaming services such as Netflix willing to explore Nollywood to give certain producers of acclaim such as Kunle Afalayo, you know, Moabudu and co the opportunity and um, the breath to explore their own stories with Netflix and utilizing their platform is something that, you know, I'm not sure all of us kind of imagined. So for the fact that we are here right now, we have to acknowledge that, number one. But that doesn't take away from you know, uh, whether it's movie critics or even producers or anybody in the ecosystem to um, offer their opinions on certain projects. We should all just take it as um, constructive criticism, pick the ones that matter to us and, you know, do away with the others. But we shouldn't, you know, be too proud whether you know you've gotten to brand salience level or you're an up-and-coming person or you're just you know a bit seasoned we shouldn't be too proud or feel that nobody can offer opinions on your projects so that that's what i feel generally but now if we're going to look at anikolapo the film as you always expect from kulia for lion the cinematography is impeccable i mean his directing his direction how he you know just exudes his essence you know it, it shows in any of his films i mean i'm a fan of his soundtracks his um, score everything about you know that particular department when it comes to his films sometimes i do feel that um Kunle's stories fall flat sometimes like you're very hopeful because of Kunle, then the cinematography, the directing, the costume, the color, everything just attracts you for the first 5, 10, 15 minutes then, you know, you're now waiting for that first break where, you know, something happens that will just get you going. But you go in 30 minutes, 40 minutes, you know, you're still not getting it. You're not waiting. The climax isn't happening. Now, the thing about it is, it's not as if the story concept is a bad story concept no i mean you're talking about a promiscuous young man um you're talking about a trapped queen um you're talking about you know the yoruba culture you're talking about like people would say on twitter i mean um shola shogoali's character is the first sugar mommy you know yoruba land or back in the day you know so like these are exciting story plot storylines for people to want to um engage with but now the thing is implementation is 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 another factor i'm not saying that he didn't implement it i mean the film is on netflix of course he implemented it but i'm talking about like in the sense of how you mesh several um, storylines plots and subplots together you know for it to actually have a bang yes some genres don't really require a bang some some comedies some thrillers some dramas sometimes don't really require a bang but you know, you still expect something from it. The reason I'm not going to say it's a bad film is because people still have a lot to take away from it. You know, people are talking about um, when a woman makes enough money, you shouldn't share it with a man. But you also have another school of thought saying that um, when a man has money, the woman has to succumb, you know, or submit because the man has money. So it's, it's, it's creating conversation. It's just like a fall from grace. The one that Tyler Perry did. If we're going to look at it, I mean, technically, if we're going to look at um, which other film did he do? Um, a Family That Prays. To me, A Family That Prays, albeit that um, the budget was a bit minimalistic, the plot came through. The actors came through. It was concise, it was succinct, it was just straight to the point. You know, but when you now have a film that is two hours plus, you know, people's attention span don't necessarily, you know, last that long, even if it's for a renowned producer or director. So I'm just saying that I would prefer stories, you know, we're talking about Nicola Po now, to be tighter, to be, you know, punchier. Yes, it's an epic. You're expected to kind of open it up. Now, you know, they're saying they're going to turn into a series. So you see what I'm saying? You know, I'm, I'm hearing also it's going to be a stage play or something. So such stories need to be compartmentalized, in my own opinion, not in one, you know, go.
So that's where I'm coming from. Me, I'm just looking at it from the technical standpoint of story delivery at the end of the day. So um, I would give it a six and a half. People are talking about the um, Nigeria House Cast Election Committee. First of all, they're doing a great job. It's a committee that you'd expect that the government or any of the ministries would have taken up, maybe tourism or National Film and Video Census Board or something, you know, could have taken it up. But this is somebody, Chineze Aniaine. I had her on my show, I think in 2018 or 17, where we were talking about how she started. She said she literally started it on her own. She had a thesis, which was the movie Ije, that featured um, Genevieve Inaji and um, Omotola Jalade. Um, so she too is in the movie making business as well. So she knows what she's doing. She knows where she's coming from. And um, anybody who is bashing her, saying that um, she's a fraud or whatever the case, or you know anybody who has anything ill to say about her needs to check themselves. Because we don't have any structure in Nigeria that is worthy of note. So if somebody is even on their own trying to create something that would help with the structure. Now somebody will say, ah, why are you talking about this person? And you're somewhat criticizing Kunle's film. It's not the same thing. I'm talking about Kunle's film. Kunle is creating his own hub. Kunle has capacity building initiatives that he's doing to bring more people into the industry. So me talking about Kunle's film shouldn't take away from what Kunle is doing or doing for the industry. If Chineze brings a bad film now, in my own opinion, I'll talk about it. So one thing shouldn't cover the whole, if you understand what I'm saying. So um, people talking about the film Anikolapo not making um, the Oscar selection <laughs> committee's list to push forward for consideration for the international um, film category at the Oscars for next year. Um, I don't know if anybody has seen this film, King of Thieves. It should be on Amazon right now. Although King of Thieves still had some technical aspects, which is why I always say, if we're going to go to um, the Oscars, it, it's a collective effort. We need the government, um, the ministries, the top-notch producers. Everybody needs to come on board. You know, the top PR agencies such as myself, you know, so if you guys, we should work together to make it happen. But it's a collective effort because everybody needs to be on board. There's a lot of marketing that needs to be done. It's not just having a film on Netflix and that's it or maybe do a premiere in lagos you know you have to be out there internationally you have to be plowing through the festivals you have to be part of you know setting boards you have to really just be out there you know it's like when you're toasting a babe that you know is out of your league you're going to pull out all the stops you're going to buy flowers even if she's a nigerian babe by force you collect the flower chocolate you know lunch dinner I mean, you're just going to pull out all the stops. So that's what we need to do. Pull out all the stops, the strategic stops, you know. So I would say Kunle shouldn't take this or whomever is, you know, hurt by not being selected by the Oscar selection committee. Take it as inspiration to create more films, to collaborate. I see this as a three to five year plan that could start now, you know, explore stories that fit that particular criteria. We just did a press conference for Africa International Film Festival. So they're going to be having a panel session where somebody from the Oscar committee, somebody who is you know part of their guild, would be giving, I mean, we'll be organizing a panel session where um, you know, we'll be educating Nollywood producers on how to create certain films, the requirements for all those type of films. I don't think we are doing enough in terms of educating ourselves if we want to you know achieve that type of feat i don't think some producers or most of the producers are aware of what it takes so we need to learn those things which is what chinese and that is the chairperson of nosc is trying to do so one thing i've noticed i don't even want to generalize to say with nigerians but one thing i've just noticed with people is when you correct them or you're trying to help by correcting them they they, they take it in another way, they think you're, you know, insulting them or they think you're just like an I too know or something, especially when you have the knowledge and you're basically just trying to want to transfer it so that it goes on and it becomes sustainable, you know, at the end of the day. We just need to be open-minded. We just need to have fun while doing it. We just have to be collaborative. There's no pride 
in wanting to learn. I've been in the media business since 2011. So it's not even that long, you know. I can go and meet somebody who just started the business in 2018 for advice because you learn every day. So we just need to be open to that. Um, Anikolapo is a solid film or solid first try for us to see if we can, you know, um, take that nomination all through the way for the International Feature Film category. I mean, Milkmaid passed through, but wasn't nominated. Was it last year or two years ago? So, I mean, you see, so it's, it's happening. It's, it's getting there. The same thing with the Grammys. I mean, Femi and Nicola Pocuti have been nominated for God, God knows how long. You know, I think it ha he has more nomination certificates than he has album plaques. So, but he's still going. Matt Day is there. Um, Angelique Kijo has won. You know, Whiskey has won. Um, Burner Boy has won like an actual Grammy for his own work, you know, so it's happening, it's there. Afro Beats or Afro Beats is ruling the world right now. You have the likes of Justin Bieber, um, who else again has, I mean, like Kelly Rowland, people are just looking to want to collaborate with, you know, the Mavian crew, you know, CK, all of them. Like Nigerian music has gone far and wide, and it's because those guys who are pioneers in the industry have allowed and also gone to learn, you know, how it works. So we need to do that for Nollywood. I saw an interview on Indani TV with Jemima Maosunde, F.I. Waran, S.O.D.K. hosted by Bisola. By the way, shout out to Bisola, doing great things, you know, coming from Big Brother, um, now hosting Family Field, hosting Indani and all that. So like, you see how one platform can help other people. But back to what I was trying to say, they were talking about the Guild. Uh, I think it was only S.O.D.K. who knew about the Guild, who was even registered to the Guild. Like, imagine that kind of thing you cannot do any work in hollywood without being you know part of the sag it's not possible they are covered you cannot there's a there's a minimum wage you know there, there are royalties for actors you know depending on the level you're at you know they have everything is structured do you understand my point so we also need to make our own home viable enough beyond just the fact that we have 200 million people I mean, you have 200 million people. How many of them are actually connected to the internet? How many of them are literate? How many of them have disposable income to be able to buy a Netflix subscription or an Amazon subscription, you know? So we need to actually make our own home viable enough and we need to give ourselves respect so that other people can respect us because that's another reason why I'm feeling, you know, we're not being considered for this thing because it's just like Nollywood. I mean, I've been to festivals outside the country and I've heard what people have had to say, good and bad, you know, and it, ju it just kills me. Um, for the main fact that we don't even refine our oil that comes in our, that is from our country, in our own country. <laughs> if I talk about Nigeria, the Nigerian factor is there. The Nigerian factor is there. So we need to repair Nigeria's brand image too, you know, and um, we can use film. Music is already helping with that. Sports is already helping with that. Toby I mean, like, it's, so, it's there. It's not so we don't have the talent. We have the talent. In Nigeria, is the first person who actually went inside a woman surgically to go and take a, a fetus out and operate it and put it back in. I mean, that's God's assistant. Like, and that person's in Nigeria. So, you know, um, it's just sad when you think about certain things. So, I mean, Anuk Lapo, first try, good, good, good try. Let, let's see what next, you know, we can do. I mean, no ill will to anybody who I'm criticizing their film. I mean, I can mention films. I don't know if maybe they, they fit the criteria for the Oscars, you know, but I can mention some Nollywood films that anybody should go and watch that. You'll be like, wow, this came from Nigeria. There's a film on Amazon, Introducing the Kuchus. That's a beautiful film, in my own opinion. That film didn't even make enough money that it should make at the box office. So um, we need to um, really go to the drawing board. This is not this is not a fast and loose thing. This is a tactical, strategic thing that we need to do. There are people in the diaspora that we need to be working with. You know, um, Kerry Washington's husband is a Nigerian. Kerry Washington is you know, he's Nollywood. I mean, Hollywood royalty. I mean, there are people like there's a TV show called Insecure. Insecure is um, it, I think it was also produced by Nigerian, although Issa Rae is the person at the helm. Um, there are several shows. This Is Us, um, a TV show where you have a Nigerian also who is a writer. And that's one of, in fact, that's my top two TV shows of all time. 
So we have talent. So it's not as if we don't have talent. We have homegrown talent here. Like so, we just need to wake up, do what's right, remove all this politics thing where we, you know, my brother, sister, father. If if it's your brother, sister, father that can actually act, fine, let them, you know, step to the plate. But don't politic everything, you know. And um, also, I need to give a shout out to Lagos State Government too. I mean, they're trying with. Um, Ebony Life Creative Academy, they're also trying with the um, African Movie Academy Awards. They're doing things with them, capacity building, where, you know, people go to all these institutions to learn for free. So I've gone from critiquing Anikola Apo to actually telling you what, you know, is, you know, going on in the industry, what we need to do so that, um, you know, all these films such as Anikola Apo can, you know, get better. And, um, you know, we can produce a film or films that fit you know oscar categories that fit festivals that fit youtube that fit tv that fit cinema because it's not all films that need to be on certain platforms you understand so some films need to be on tv some films need to be on youtube some films need to be at festivals some films need to be in certain streaming services you know some films need to be in cinema so all these things we need to learn and you know basically learn the business of filmmaking i'd love to read your comments what do you guys think let us know in the comments and also on my radio show movie road show on 99.3 nigeria in 4fm lagos saturdays 9 p.m